Lately I've been perfecting and refining my kite aerial photography technique, mostly by copying what's worked for other YouTubers. I've got my GoPro settings where I want them, there's no fishbowl effect anymore, the hyper smooth on the Hero 8 is working great, and I've got it all augmented with a, a Feiyu WGX2 gimbal. And uh, all this dampening is leading to some pretty smooth video, but I still have one problem, and that is, until I get the camera back and I pull out the chip, I have no idea where the camera has been facing until now. The workaround is actually to use a video downlink, and I got this idea from Evan Reinheimer's channel. Unfortunately, the equipment that he shows in the video, which I've linked in the comments, all the equipment that he's using is not available anymore. So I went ahead and improvised a little, and I bought an FPV camera. That stands for First Person Video. It's a tiny micro camera with a transmitter, and you can find them on many websites. They're pretty cheap. The one I got was $17. You're going to need a video monitor slash receiver so you can see what your camera's filming. It was the most expensive thing that I had to buy, but at $44 it was still pretty reasonable. You're also going to need a small battery to power the camera that's aloft with the kite. They're really lightweight. They're about the size of a stick of gum, and I got two of them for $13. There's probably a few ways you could assemble all of this together. I chose putting Velcro on the bottom of the GoPro and hanging the camera transmitter upside down and then running the terminal leads over to a battery that was taped on the left hand side near the swivel. That just seemed to work best for balancing. Um, you could probably try a few other ways and have it work. You'll also notice I didn't really like the terminal leads that were that came with the camera so I just went ahead and bought the red and blue clips from Ace Hardware. I just like the way they quick disconnect better than the tiny little white ones which are hard to manage. Alright, the kite is aloft, it's up in the air, it's time to attach the pick event mount. It's usually in this unstable, turbulent wind that the camera will get dinged on the ground as it's going up and possibly get misplaced. This is where the micro camera transmitter really comes in handy. You don't have to worry about where the camera's aiming uh, if it took a small ding on the grass. I let out about 900 feet of kite line and I had a very good reception from that distance. The lines that you see on the monitor in this display, I did not see them. Those are just uh, artifacts from the camera filming a monitor screen. I do know that the battery was powering the camera transmitter for at least 15 to 20 minutes of the flight, but when I recovered the kite about 40 minutes later, the camera was dead. There are various power settings on the camera transmitter and that would affect battery life. I have no idea which one I'm even using right now, I just used whatever came out of the box. If anybody knows what the battery life is on these FPV cameras at various settings, I'd be interested to know. One of my favorite things about kite and aerial photography is that there's no sound of drone motors, electric motors, or any motors for that matter. It's just the sound of wind and the kite string humming and some of the sounds from below. I'll leave you with those as we close out this video.